Hi, and welcome to lesson 12.4, which is about making predictions with experimental probability. And our central question is, how do you make predictions using experimental probability? Hey, good idea. Using experimental probability to make a prediction. Scientists study data to make predictions. You can use probabilities to make predictions in your daily life. Example one, Danae found the experimental probability of her making a bullseye when throwing darts is two out of 10 or 20%. Out of 75 throws, how many bullseyes could she expect, uh, could she predict she would make? Well, let's use a proportion. We know that she does two out of 10. So how many times would she expect out of 75? And you could see that 10 times 7.5 is 75. So you'd multiply 2 times 7.5, which is 15. And so she would expect it to happen 15 times. So that's one way of doing it. Or I might do it a different way as well. I might do it this way. 2 out of 10 equals x over 75. I would cross multiply. 2 times 75, that's 150. And then I cross multiply. This is 10x. And then x is equal to 150 divided by 10, which is 15. So that's another way of doing it as well. We could also do it a second method. Now, if we knew that it's 20%, we could take 20% of 75. And so 20% is 0.20 as a decimal. Of means to multiply, and then times 75. And so, yeah, and that's what I was just talking about right there. And when you multiply those two together, you get 15. So today can predict that she will make about 15 bullseyes out of, uh, uh, bullseye throws out of 75 trials. Okay, your turn. Try this one out. A car rental company sells accident insurance to 24% of its customers. Out of 550 customers, about how many customers are predicted to purchase insurance? Okay, 24% out of 550. That's what I'm thinking about right there. The word, uh, so the word of means to multiply, so I'm multiplying. And 24% is 0.24. When I multiply those two, I get 132 customers. Next, using experimental probability to make a qualitative prediction. A prediction is something you reasonably expect to happen in the future. A qualitative prediction helps you decide which situation is more likely in general. Example two, a doctor's office records data and concludes that on average, 11% of patients call to reschedule their appointments per week. The office manager predicts that 23 appointments will be rescheduled out of 240 total appointments during the next week. Explain whether the prediction is reasonable. Well, we know that 11% uh, call to reschedule. So let's find out what 11% of uh, two, uh, two, uh, I'm sorry, 11 percent of 240. So if 11% is 11 out of 100, because that's what percent means is out of 100, then how many will uh, cancel out of, how many for X will cancel out of 240? And typically what I do, I cross multiply that 240 times 11 is 2640, I believe. 2640, yeah. And divide that by uh, 100, because you, you, know, you cross multiply the other side. And what you have is, um, when you cross multiply, I should say 2640 equals 100 times x, and then you have to divide by both sides by 100, and that is equal to 20, what? Yeah, 26.4. So easy to divide by 100, you just move the decimal two times to the left, and then it's done. And so there you go. Or we could see, we could use the other one, so 11% of 240, 11% is 0.11 as a decimal. Of means to multiply, 40, 240, and you can um, get 26.4 when you multiply those two numbers. So the prediction of 23 is reasonable, but a little low. Remember, uh, the office, office manager predicted 23 appointments. So it seems like it's a little bit low out of the 11% that usually uh, uh, cancel, uh, but it's reasonable because 23 is a little bit less than 26.4. 
your turn question in emails to monthly readers of a newsletter three percent of the emails come back undelivered the editor predicts that if she sends out 12,372 emails she will receive 437 notices for undelivered email do you agree with this prediction well I need to figure out what three percent of 12,372 is so I need to multiply those two numbers and I have a handy calculator here so handy three percent that's point zero three of means to multiply twelve thousand three hundred seventy two so we have point zero three times twelve thousand three hundred seventy two and that is three hundred seventy one point one six sixteen okay so uh, four hundred thirty seven seems uh, a little bit too high right there because what I'm getting is it should be around 371 so no about 371 emails of 12,372 will come back undelivered the prediction is too high okay next making a quantitative prediction you can use proportional reasoning to make a quantitative prediction and compare uh, options in real world situations. Our example three, an online poll for a movie site shows its polling results for a new movie. If a newspaper surveys 150 people leaving the movie, how many people can it predict will like the movie based on the online poll? In an online poll, they're just asking people, do you like it or not? Is the movie site's claim accurate if the newspaper has 104 people say they like the movie? Okay, so they're saying 72% like it. The answer is a prediction of how many people out of 150 will like the movie based on the online poll. Also, tell whether 104 people uh, that say they like the movie is enough to support the movie's site claim. List the information. The online poll says 72% of people of moviegoers like the new movie, and the newspaper surveys 150 people. So we can use a proportion. 72% uh, of the 150 people surveyed. So 72% means out of 100. So that equates to how many people out of 150. And we could see that 100 times 1.5 is 150. So we have to multiply 72 times 1.5 to get 108. So that number ends up being 108. The newspaper can predict that 108 people out of 150 will say they will like the movie based on the online poll. And let's justify, oops, let's justify this. Since 108 is close to 104, the newspaper survey and the online poll show that about the same percent of people like the movie. Okay, seems consistent. Your your turn question. Try this on your own before I do this. So pause the video. On average, 24 percent of customers who buy shoes in a particular store buy two or more pairs. One weekend, 350 customers purchase shoes. How many can be predicted to buy two or more pairs? If 170, if 107 customers buy two or more pairs, did customers buy, uh, did more customers than normal buy two or more pairs? Well, let's see. And so I'll use my calculator again. So I'm first going to find 24% of 350. So that's going to be 0 0.24, 0 0.24 times 350. So we're looking at 84, 84 customers. So that the answer to the first question, how many can be predicted to buy two or more pairs? Well, if there's 350 customers, then 24% of that 350 is 84. I just showed you, I did the calculation right there. Next. Uh, if 107 customers buy more than two pairs, did more customers buy norm, uh, buy more than normal? Uh, 107 customers, uh, if 107 <laughs> customers buy more than two pairs, did more customers than normal buy two or more pairs? Yes, because 107 is bigger than 100 is bigger than 84, so more customers than normal bought two or more pairs. Yes because that's what normally happens and 107 is bigger than what normally happens. And that is what you gotta know about making predictions with experimental probability. Thanks for watching.